up guys, my name is Zach and today I am driving a 2010 Pontiac Vibe. Up front is a 1.8 liter inline four and down below is a four speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this Pontiac Vibe for many reasons. First of all, this is one of the last Pontiacs ever made. Being a 2010, it's right at the end. But also this was a collaboration between Toyota and Pontiac, was built at the Numi manufacturing plant. I think that has its own interesting story that I'm excited to share with you today. But before we get on anything else, if you'd like to submit your own vehicle to be reviewed in a video just like this, you can head over to my website, zachperdle.com. There's a quick and easy submission form there. It takes less than two minutes to fill out and you could get a video of your car just like this one. But let's get back to that 1.8 liter under the hood. Well, mechanically, this car is a Toyota, which is very, very good for someone who might be interested in buying one of these because Toyota makes very, very reliable products. Now, there was also a 2.4 liter inline four offered as well on the upper trims of the Vibe, such as the GT. However, that is the 2.4 liter from Toyota. Very reliable engine, but they did have oil burning issues. If you want to look more into that, you can look into the Camry 2.4 because that's what the engine was derived from. This engine makes 132 horsepower. However, if you went up to that bigger inline four, you would be making 158. So not a huge difference, but 132 seems to be fine. Like I said, paired to it is a little automatic transmission. Now you could find these in manual as well. This is a four speed auto, but a five speed auto was offered with the bigger engine and a five speed manual was offered if you got that option. Last but not least, this Vibe is front wheel drive. However, there was an all wheel drive option available as well. So plenty of different drivetrain setups for the Vibe. Now this is a base model. So we get that front wheel drive, smaller engine and four speed, but that could all be changed. How does it feel to actually drive the Pontiac Vibe? Well, it drives a lot like a Toyota product and an economy product at that. So you do get a lot of road noise, don't get a whole lot of response in the throttle. The steering is fine. It does its job. Visibility is all right as well, but overall, I'm not thrilled with the experience, but it's also not a bad one. With that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have a couple of gauges. Off to the left is my tachometer. In the center is the speedometer, and off to the right in an oddly shaped oval gauge, I get the fuel and coolant temperature. On the steering wheel, I don't get any forward-facing buttons because it is the base model. However, I do get cruise control, something of which the Pontiac G6 of the same era did not get at the base. So nice little addition there. Off to the left, I get a climate control vent and my power mirrors. And down below, I have my traction control off and a bunch of dead switches. Moving on to the door, we have the lock and unlock power windows of which only the driver's window is auto, but that's okay. And moving into the center, we get another climate control vent, our hazard switch, and then the radio itself. It does have a CD player as well as an aux port. Pontiac only put aux ports in their vehicles towards the end of the 2000s, which as we all know, then they failed. So finding a Pontiac with an aux port is kind of rare. Then we do have our climate controls. Very simple here. Off to the left is where to send it. In the middle is fan speed. Off to the right is temperature. And of course, a button for AC. Then I do get a little cubby and a button to turn on and off my AC 115 volt outlet. Kind of cool that they put it right there and kind of cool that they even included something like that. Then we have the shifter itself. This is so unapologetically Toyota. If you didn't think this car was built by Toyota, now it's almost certain. This is a Toyota shifter. I've seen it in so many Corollas, Camrys, and even Lexus products. I like it. I call these the jigsaw shifters because you kind of have to move them around to get them in and out of gear and there's no button safety lockout. Moving down the center console, we have that 115 volt outlet. This is really, really cool. It's rare to find household outlets in cars at all, but in a vehicle this small, it has to be one of the smallest vehicles I've ever driven that has a outlet like that. And that is really, really cool. And you still get a regular 12 volt cigarette lighter off to the left. So plenty of power options here in the Vibe. Then we do have some cubbies and cup holders. So we will do a big friggin' bottle test here in the Pontiac Vibe. And here's the thing, the bottle does go in, but when I push it in, it bows out the entire cup holder and bends it. So I can't in good faith give that a pass because it's borderline breaking the cup holder just to do so. So unfortunately, the Pontiac Vibe, as much as I love this little car, fails the big friggin' bottle test. <laughs>
Then we do get a dual opening center console. Interestingly enough, there's nothing in either compartment, top nor bottom, no plug, no anything. However, we got that up front. And then we got to talk about the seats. Like I said, this is a base, so the seats are pretty unimaginative. They're fine. They're doing the job. I don't really have any complaints besides the fact that they're boring. But if you're buying this car to be the most exciting automobile in the history of the world, you might be looking in the wrong direction. However, speaking of seats, we do have back seats, so let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2010 Pontiac Vibe, and first of all, knee room good. My knees aren't hitting the seat in front of me. My head isn't hitting the ceiling. My head actually has almost a fistful of space up above me. I'm 5'11", so that is really, really nice to see, and that's a huge benefit of these more square back hatchback vehicles of the 2000s. We saw the same thing with the Scion XB. It has that sort of roof line where I can sit back here comfortably. Now the seats aren't plush or pillowy like I would see out of a luxury car, but this isn't a luxury car, it's an economy car. So the seats are fine, there's a little rip, but after 13 years, I'd be surprised if it didn't. I don't get a center console. I don't get any sort of cubby space. I have little cup holders in the doors. That's about it. Then I do have pop-out cup holders in the center console. So I guess that is a little bit nice. However, speaking of space, let's hop out. We'll take a quick look at the trunk and cargo space, and then we'll talk about the looks. All right, so we're on the back of the Pontiac Vibe. Grab the little handle in here. And something that I really, really like is that you actually get this hardened liner so if you put these seats down it has these rails things can slide on this actually is a pretty nice utility vehicle now it doesn't have the nice carpet that you might want to see but that's okay in my book i can also unlock this pull that up we get some storage down there and you can do the same here and that is your access to the spare tire tools and all of that goodiness. Other than that, nothing crazy to write home about, but definitely very, very nice to have that hard loading floor. Now we gotta talk about the looks, and I really, really like the look of the Vibe. I think it looks really interesting and different, and certainly different than anything we see on the road today. It also, I think, looks different enough from the Toyota Matrix to really justify the fact that they are two separate cars. Yes, they share underpinnings, chassis, parts, all that stuff, but really they do have their own identity. And that's what I like to see when vehicles share platforms. However, with all of that being said, let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think driving a Pontiac vibe? Well, before we get on to my touchy feelies, let's talk about the history of this car. So like I said, this car was built at the Numi manufacturing plant out in Fremont, California. The Numi plant was a joint venture between Toyota and Chevy to build cars. That's where we got the 80s Corolla that also was the Chevy Nova. And all throughout the late 80s, 90s, and even through the 2000s, Toyota and Chevy built cars there together. We also got some of the Geo products from there, the Geo Prism, of which was a Toyota Corolla. Mainly, that's where we got this, the Matrix and the Pontiac vibe. Chevy and Toyota were working together in harmony, and it was a really cool thing. It was these two Goliaths in the auto industry coming together to build vehicles. I thought that that was kind of special. But if you know anything about history in the late 2000s, in 2008, we had a financial crisis here in the United States, one of the worst ever. And so Chevy and Toyota respectively started selling off assets. One of the biggest assets for Chevy was Pontiac, so they canceled the brand. When they did that, it left Numi kind of in limbo. The vibe was still being built there, and once that ended, the whole building was useless. And so it actually ended up being sold to a little startup company we now know as Tesla. That's right, the Tesla Model S's and Model X's in California are built in the old factory that this car came out of. And so this car was incredibly short-lived because this is the second generation of the Vibe, which started production in February of 2008 for the 2009 model year. Production ended in August of 2009. Although this car is badged as a 2010, production ended August 2009, meaning this car was only built for about a year and a half before Pontiac closed its doors and the connection between Chevy and Toyota ended. You see, it was a good relationship too. 
And I'm happy to see that these brands have worked with other brands since then. Nissan has worked with Chevy with their NV200 vans. Toyota has worked with Subaru. They've gone on to see other people. But I think what they had here was something kind of special. And I think GM really benefited from the operation because looking at this car, it looks like a GM, something I think GM has always done really, really well is building distinguished, fun, interesting looking cars, but it has the drivetrain guts, heart and soul of a Toyota, something that Toyota is known for building reliable vehicles. It was kind of a match made in heaven, but unfortunately the lights that shine the brightest burn out the quickest. And so after two decades of manufacturing together, they parted ways, leaving this car an orphan. This car is really, really good. And it helped improve Pontiac's reputation even at the end of its life. And just the name, the vibe, a word that has come up in the lexicon so much more frequently in the last couple of years. Yes, I did catch a vibe. It was blue and I loved it. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Michael for letting me take out his Pontiac vibe. He's absolutely awesome. I've reviewed a couple of his vehicles before in the past, and I was so excited to get behind the wheel of this little vibe. So thank you, Michael. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.